Hello, welcome. Thank you for uh, clicking on to this uh, video. It's New Year's Day today, so um, I pray for you, uh, God's blessing and God's peace on this new beginning. This is a short little video on um, the Feast of Epiphany, which we will celebrate on Sunday, but I keep celebrating into next week and on the pr proper day, uh, January the 6th as well. Epiphany of the Lord. You might know the um, great artistic work um, featuring Homer Simpson in the Simpsons movie. And in the Simpsons movie, Homer has an epiphany. And his epiphany is that other people matter. Epiphanies, um, they come at us all the time. A friend rode a bus back and forth to work every day. And on this daily journey, she sat watching the world pass by, gazing out of her window. And one day, she caught sight of a poster hanging from a church notice board and it looked faded and unloved but this poster carried some words from St John's Gospel for God so loved the world that he gave his only son those words for God so loved the world struck something deep in her soul and they kept circling in her mind for God so loved the world for God so loved the world and she began to notice the poster each day its tattered old image started to become a daily blessing and it was like a holy spell upon her Jesus's words seemed to take hold of her they sort of crept up on her and with dawning joy, uh, she realised that she must simply be part of the creation that God so loves. And there's lots of things we can deny about ourselves. But one thing that is undeniable is that we're part of this thing called creation. We're in it. And St John says that God loves this creation. He loves all of it and he holds all of it with great compassion and mercy. Every soul is in fact an irreplaceable instance of this beautiful, broken but beloved world that God holds. You are a unique, personal, irreplaceable instance of this creation and like when you pray you're the whole of creation you represent the whole of it in its totality and God loves this totality epiphanies that I'm part of a world the whole world that God loves not part of the world God loves the epiphany that God loves the whole of it, the Jewish bit and the Gentile bit, the black and the white bit, the old and the young bit, the east and the west and the north and the south bit. All epiphanies come from God. And you must keep your eyes closed if you want to avoid them. In this season, uh, we begin, like an epiphany tide, and um, we celebrate all of the epiphanies of Jesus in the Gospels. They sort of all kaleidoscope together in January. Gospel epiphanies usually come to people on the fringe, uh, on the outside, to people who think that they couldn't possibly be part of God's world. It's like God's world that he loves and I'm on the outside of it. And all the good stuff you hear, well, that must be for someone else. It doesn't include me. Well, the epiphany that we celebrate on Sunday and on January the 6th, um, well, that, that first epiphany, it comes to foreign stargazers from the East, the Magi, 
the wise men. Um, people who were not part of the holy nation, people who were not part of the same faith even, people who might have all sorts of, I don't know, dodgy, deterministic, astrological views of the world. But, but to this group is given the epiphany that Jesus is the saviour of all of it, that Jesus, that God um, loves all of it. All of it. All of it. You'll know if you've had an epiphany because you'll have a deep sense of being included in something sacred and healing and holy that you thought didn't include you or people like you. Um, I, I love reading stories of epiphanies. I, I was listening to uh, Richard Raw talk about an English mystic that I just hadn't heard of in the 20th century, Carol uh, Houselander. And, and Carol Houselander was one day on a train and she was just out of nowhere. She was seized with this absolute conv like a conviction. It was like this blinding light revelation that God just adored with an unbelievable amount of energy and compassion every single person on this train and then this this kind of epiphany just stayed with her for three or four days she just couldn't get it out of her head it was astounding if this is true if this is true then everything is different and all the things that we clasp onto in the darkest nights is true all that stuff that says all things shall be well and all manner of things shall be well all of that is true if that epiphany is true that God is the saver and lover of all of it um, there's something about the epiphany of Jesus to the wise men which is just astounding and amazing um, and it's the same thing for the shepherds as well um, the one the shepherds like see the angels and the angels say go and see this family and I always love the fact that they're not disappointed that they're not underwhelmed go and see this family that just look like I don't know some homeless peasants they smell and where they're gathered is amongst the cattle and but they're not overwhelmed they come back and it says this little verse in Luke um, they, they found everything was just as the angel said it would be and I love the fact that the major when they come there's something about the family and they're not um, underwhelmed they're not disappointed when they see Joseph and Mary and Jesus far from it have we got eyes to see the epiphany through a covering that might look overwhelming in its sheer ordinariness and everydayness. I love the truth that um, when the, the Magi see Jesus, um, what they see is this uh, child who, who is utterly incapable of doing anything for himself. Um, and it's an epiphany to a wounded world. God has chosen to be touched by the most basic needs of the body and know what it feels like to be able to do nothing to meet them. God has come to make and share all feelings of desperation and rage and frustration, all of them, all of them, his own. Not just in his birth, but in his life and in his death. Jesus holds out his arms, unable to meet his most basic needs, needs in his in his birth it happens, then of course in his death his his arms are nailed apart. Um, at the first and the last, Christ could not even um, give himself drink um, or feed himself. 
the epiphany of the cradle and the epiphany of the cross uh, is an epiphany of all conquering divine weakness it's the epiphany of all powerful divine vulnerability and it's for all of it for all of it now um january the first today um i hope that you're not making really harsh uh new year's resolutions and everyone goes into really harsh sobriety in january you know, um clean january and all of that well for the christian church you're invited to keep celebrating that that, that christmas falls into the epiphany um and the ancient tradition is to celebrate a long Christmas. January is cold and harsh. Keep celebrating. If you want to do all the self-improvement stuff, all the real harsh discipline stuff, well, there's, you know, there's other times in the year you might want to try that. Um, for the Christians, the holy season of Lent is not that, but that's a real time to think about how we might set some things aside and um, embrace other things. Um, but... But the focus for Christmas tide and Epiphany this January is that you've been given something and you've been included in something. And it's joyful and it's life giving. And at this time of the year, you and me, we really need that because we're really little. And January's hard and dark. God's peace be with you this new year, 2021. What will it bring us? I don't know. No idea. But I'm going to cling fast to the epiphany that is shown to beautiful souls that we're included. That you're included because God loves all of it. All of it. God so loved the world, your world, that he came to it and made all of it, his own, in the body and the life of Jesus.